Yellow, and welcome to our first GarageBand tutorial. So let's go ahead and open up GarageBand. The first thing that you will see is the GarageBand Recents, which will contain all of your previous works. As you can see, I have quite the selection. What we want to focus on right now is the blue plus sign on the top right corner above the search engine. This will allow us to create a new song. This will lead up to a second landing page that features a keyboard and several other instruments. They have options such as sound library, drummer, and the external features that permits you to use third-party instruments to add directly into your song. From here, we're going to ignore the other features and select keyboard. This brings up what appears to be an actual keyboard, from where we can certainly play around and create fun melodies on this virtual instrument. However, we're not where we want to be just yet. On the left side, there's the button known as the Tracks View button, which is the second item on that list. This will finally lead us to the area that I prefer to use. In here, I play with Apple Loops, Tracks, and audio recordings that I've created on my own. I usually build and construct music that I play behind my speed paintings. On the menu above the work field, we have a Rewind button, the Play button, a Record, a Volume, and a Metronome button. At the very right end of the menu, there is also the Loop Browser button, which allows us to search through uploaded files as well as Apple Loop tracks that the app provides. Finally, we have the Info button, which is extremely useful. It allows us to read through the tools in order to better understand the app's capabilities. From here, I generally use the Loop Browser and the Middle Menu buttons. You can select from the variety of loops and drag them over to the work field. Some examples of possible manipulation with these tracks are cutting, trimming, pasting, and modifying the sound gain of each track. If you tap directly on the track once, those menus will appear. Whenever you are done manipulating and adding new tracks, and you feel you have the song that you want, it's time to transfer to a new electronic, so that way you can edit it in other means. You will need to exit out of your song. You won't have to worry about saving since the app does this for you automatically. Once we are back at GarageBand Recents, if you firmly press and release on the song that you modified, from here we want to share our song. There are three options that will pop up, and for now we want to transfer just the song and nothing else. You are given more options on what quality and file type that you want for your song. However, GarageBand only does MP4, WAV, and AIFF, so in order to make your file into an MP3, you'll need to transfer that file into another software. For this, we're going to use VLC Media Player, which is free. I'll leave a link in the description below. Once you have downloaded VLC and you have the program open, go to Media and down to Convert slash Save near the bottom of the submenu. From here, it will open a window. We want to click on Add and go into our files and select the audio file that we want to convert and then click Open. Then we go into the Convert slash Save button at the bottom of the window and rather than click on it, we want to click on the arrow on that button and select Convert. This opens up another window and we want to focus on the Profile section here. Search for Audio-MP3 and then choose your destination for your file. Afterwards, click Start and go to the folder that you selected for the destination of your new file. You now have a converted MP3 file that you can send anywhere. I really hope that this has been helpful to you, and if you have any more questions or really need any help, please feel free to comment or message me. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you like what you see, subscribe to me.